The power of the spoken word is undeniable, and at all the great crises and injuries in the history, we we'll find great speeches which swayed the outcome. Great speeches have motivated citizens to fight injustice, throw off tyranny, and nail down their life for a worldly cause. Words have drawn meaning out of tragedy, comforted those who mourn, and memorialized the events with dignity and solemnity they deserve. Words can also move people to risk life and limp, shed tears, laugh out loud, recommit to virtue, change their life, or feel patriotic. By weaving and spinning words into great territories of art, a man can wield an almost godlike power reminiscence of Herod the Great in the Bible. Of course, even the most malicious leaders have honed these skills for nefarious purposes. Now, the power of speech can be used for good or evil, and it comes with great responsibility. Those who uphold virtue and goodness must be prepared to speak as masterfully as those who seductively and smoothly seek to convince the public to abandon their principles and values. All oratory is public speaking. But not all public speaking is oratory. If public speaking is fast food, oratory is a dumb meal. Not in pretentiousness, but in the fact that oratory rises above ordinary. It's prepared with passion, infused with creativity, and masterfully crafted to offer a sublime experience. While the spoken word has been central to humanity since our speeches began to vocalize, it was in ancient Greece that speech would be raised to be an act and true oratory would be born. A golden age of eloquence was ushered in by statesman, general, and master orator Pericles. His funeral oration was perhaps the first great speech to be written, prepared for public, and set the standard for all orations to come. Yet it is Demosthenes who is remembered as the greatest orator of Greece and perhaps of all time. His speaking ability rose an Athenian people deep in an apathetic slumber to fight the threat Philip of Macedonia posed to their liberty. Oratory was considered one of the highest arts, even of virtue. It was an essential part of every man's education, the foundation on which all other academic pursuits and disciplines were built. The mastery of oratory was considered an essential part of being a well-rounded man. Although some might think it's a thing of the past, the reception and praise given to Barack Obama's speeches suggests that there has been an untapped hunger among citizens of oratory that will inspire them and touch on their ideals. While a few great orators exist today, the art has fallen to disregard. When a man is called upon to speak, he often hums and falls, brought his audience to tears. But should not be so, gentlemen, it is time to resurrect and cultivate the art of oratory. First, the Rise Oratory Competition, the season one of the competition held last year, featuring nine schools, with Amu Debra leading the team of Nana Modo College, who were eventually crowned champions. The competition is back again, and with it, we believe we would resonate the oratory spirit of the greatest of all times, including the likes of Pericles, Demosthenes, Abraham Lincoln, Winston Churchill, Mahatma Gandhi, John F. Kennedy, Nelson Mandela, Martin Luther King, Ronald Reagan, and Barack Obama. Yes, this year, the second edition of the Rise Oratory Competition has 10 participating schools. They include Yoruba College, Nana Moda College, Federal Government College, drawn in Port A. We also have AC College 2, Institute of Continuous Education, ICE College Worry, and Robo College, drawn into Port B. And in Port C, College of Commerce, Aussie Model College, Dom Domingos College, and Wangwe College make the total numbers of 10 schools. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen here in the studios, listeners and viewers, welcome to the season 2 of the RISE Oratory Competition. I am James Iboku. And I am Precious Ogolaja. Of course, our first set today will have uh, three schools on parade today, and they all have been prepared. Speaking on the team, the effects of insecurity on the education of the Nigerian child. I'll take that again. The effects of insecurity on the education of the Nigerian child. Without further ado, let's make welcome our judges today, uh, who have made themselves into the studio this morning, and we say thank you so much. Uh, for taking out your time to be with us. We start from Mrs. Chingwe Dada, who is the CEO of Nizen Kiris. She's also uh, a children enthusiast and, of course, a speech lover. Good morning, Ma. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yes, and of course, you're making your second appearance because I remember you with us last year in the first edition. Yes, and I had such an amazing time. I'm happy to be here again. And I can assure you that this second edition, our students have promised that they'll also treat you once more again. I feel it. 
<laughs> a live manner, let's make welcome Dr. Stephen Kekege, who is uh, from the Department of English College of Education. Good morning, sir. Thank you. It's, it's good to be with you once more. I was here with you last year, uh, and it was uh, an awesome experience. All right, and uh, you can be sure that, yes, I will have another awesome experience again. Quickly, we must remind you that these have been put together by the staff management team of RISE 106.7 FM and of course, Essetine Integrated Nigeria Limited. And of course, for those who are every, anywhere you are, in any, any part of the country, you can always watch this live on our Facebook page because we are streaming live on Facebook, www.facebook.com forward slash RISE FM Radio. Big thumbs up also uh, to Inke Chiadele, who is on the console with us here. And of course, uh, Linda Odin, who would also serve as our timekeeper right here this morning. <laughs> Alright, the stage is set and the time is right for us now to get into the nitty gritty. Absolutely. Like we mentioned, three schools are here with us. Yeah, yeah. Precious, what are you expecting today? Well, I expect to see a great art of um, oratory. I expect to see eloquence. I expect to see, you know, that uh, I expect to see something new, you know, with um, the way they are going to present today. All right. So just w so we run you through the modus operandi of the competition. Mm -hmm. Like we earlier mentioned, ten schools have been drawn in three different groups. That would give a three groups in two, two uh, three schools in two groups and four in the final group. From the first two groups, two schools will qualify to the next round, while for the final group, three schools will qualify to the next round. And in the second round, there will also be two schools in the first group, two schools in the second group, and three schools in the third group. And from each group, two schools will qualify, automatically leaving us with four schools in the final round of the competition. All right, going to Port A. As mentioned earlier, Yorura College, Naramode College, and the Federal Government College have been drawn in Port A. But right here with us in the studio, we have students from Yorura College and Nana Model College. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're not very excited about, uh, but um, Federal Government College have just called in this morning uh, due to some internal issues and uh, they will not be a part of uh, the competition this year and this morning. So as it stands right now, we can tell you, based on this information, we can confirm to you that the schools right here with us talking about Yorura College and Nanamodo College would automatically qualify to the next round, but then they will still give us uh, their speeches uh, this morning because they are poised to also trill our, our judges and of course you listening and watching us all over. Absolutely. Alright, without further ado, the stage is now set for the first set of speeches right here. Remember, the team once again is the effects of insecurity <coughs> on education of the Nigerian child. Starting from the defending champion, Nana Modo College, please put your hands together as we give uh, the stage round for Ekpete Favor. Hey ladies and gentlemen, speaking to you is a petty favor from Nana Mother College. I'm here to deliver a speech which bears the title The Effects of Insecurity on the Education of the Nigerian Child. Before looking at the effects of insecurity, it is expedient that we know its meaning. Generally, insecurity has been defined in two ways. First, as uncertainty, anxiety about oneself. The lack of confidence due to situations that had occurred before. And then it is defined as a state of being vulnerable, being open to threats or danger. In other words, it is a lack of protection. However, the latter may lead to the former. Insecurity includes the menaces that causes human survival to be tarnished, your daily life to be affected, and your dignity to be put to shame. For example, we have environmental degradation, violation of rights, poverty, terrorism, and so on. The worst feeling the victims of insecurity have is that they feel nobody cares about their problem and nothing can be done about it, thus they feel abandoned. Having known <coughs> the meaning of insecurity and its concept, we may now deliberate on its effect, which includes the following. Fear and anxiety in students. As a result of unsafe environments, 
Students no longer feel safe. They're scared that anything can happen at any time and do not concentrate on their studies. Take for example the situations in a larger community and environment. The communal clashes they frequently have has hampered the educational activities of not only the children, but also the school. Child abuse. Children now are being abused because they no longer stay in school, they hang out to street corners, and those in the society that are the ones coordinating the insecurity have been abusing children. Drug abuse. Those school dropouts that no longer go to school as a result of conflicts that regularly act affect the activities now angered in street corners they introduce a drug to their peers which also clears their path to pornography and other social vices closure of schools as a result of regular conflicts schools are being shut down and so many more will be shut down if in insecurity continues to grow vandalization of school properties school properties have been destroyed we observe that schools that are used as voting centers are in danger of being vandalized and destroyed because one might never know when the fight will break out and then the school rendered yet useless for the students. Production of a big graduate. With insecurity on the increase, students no longer go to school regularly. They miss out on active learning experiences and class participation. However, when they struggle to go to the university, and insecurity continues to be a stumbling block to education, these students find it difficult to graduate on time, and lecturers who would not add them wait too much in the school tend to let them go and then produce a big graduate in the country, thus reducing our rate of development. Insecurity has many effects and thus cannot be overemphasized. One effect of insecurity that still hurts today is the abduction of Shiba girls in Vernon State 2014. Homes were shattered, schools were destroyed, people were killed, and individuals were displaced. The hearts of those that were the relatives of the guests abducted were shattered. I pity the future without education. If insecurity is not handled properly, children will be affected. In conclusion, Nigeria as a whole should join together in singularized efforts to raise the educational attainments of her youth, especially those who are deprived of regular school attendance due to conflicts and insecurity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Ms. Ekwete Favor from Nana College. We now um, welcome forward a supporting speaker, Ojugu Ogene Runa, so please come. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Ojugu Ogene Runa, and I'm a student of Nana Model College. I am here to speak on the topic, Effects of Insecurity on the Education of Nigerian Children. The current issue in our country presently, of which the school is involved is insecurity. The school as an open system equally depends on external influences. Some of the insecurity the school faces today are Boko Haram crisis, which has led to the loss of students' life and cop members. Food insecurity like contaminated food and crime ratings like raping and kidnapping. These insecurities have negative effects on school children. Some of the effects of insecurities are one, psychological effects. Some psychological effects such as mental health disorders, which affect school children and their social interaction, both of which are critical to the success of these children. Two, internally displaced people. When school children are moved from one location to another, they will be destabilized and will not be able to focus on their school activities. Insecurity like Boko Haram crisis has led to the death of students. Boko Haram members believe that education is a forbidden thing and have tried vigorously to eradicate education. In the process of eradication, many lives of students are lost. Four, insecurity affects the academic performance of students. Major findings reveal 
as insecurity leads to the poor performance of students in schools. Five, heightened aggression and violence. Students who witness crisis act cruelly to their mates and parents. Insecurity has led to revenges, to revenge. The youth today take their, their mates and parents as their substitutes to crime rating. Every child, irrespective of their situation and status, have the right to education and should not be deprived from this right. Thank you. Well done to our first set of speakers from Nana Model College. Well, in case you just joined in, this is the season two of the RISE Oratory Competition, live on RISE 106.7 FM. Remember, you can listen live on the terrestrial platform, and you can also watch on, the on our Facebook page. Just log on to www.facebook.com forward slash RISE FM Radio. And of course, watch what is happening. You can also drop your comments and share with us what you make of what is happening live here in the studios. Of course, these have been put together by Rise 106.7 FM and SET Integrated Nigeria Limited. All right, moving up to the second school from Yorunra College. Speaking on the team, the effects of insecurity on the education. Children are the hope and the leaders for the future. Imagine how like. Children are the hope and the leaders for the future. Imagine how life be without our hope. When one deals with insecurity for a long period of time, doubt and negative feeling may have a negative effect on individuals. Insecurity is linked to mental conditions such as anxiety, addictive or dependent policies. Good morning to you, Rise FM, my royal selected judges, accurate timekeeper, and my wonderful audience ready to listen and learn. My name is Okeogene Pelete Yube, and I'm from Yoruba College of Angwe. Since I'll be talking about the effects of insecurity on the education of the Nigerian child, I'll start by defining two terms. First, insecurity. Insecurity, as we already, already know, is a feeling of uncertainty and lack of confidence or anxiety about oneself. While insurgency is a forceful attempt to take control over a government, which we also know is an act of rebellion. Studies so far have shown that insecurity has a negative impact on the children, including their emotional behavior. These effects include anxiety, fear and panic, and also poor school performance. In a country like ours, Nigeria, that is threatened with insecurity, insurgency, and violence, children are the most vulnerable members of our society, as they are now lodging the streets as orphans or as, or as victims to man's inhumanity to man. Today, children are, children are allowed to lot around the streets scavenging for food for themselves or making them press to all sorts of abuses in Nigeria. This is as a result of no tight security. In addition, the most, the most devastating effects of insecurity in our country has not only brought down or increased the number of street children, but has also posed a threat to the future of these children. Today, many children are not able to attend school because of fear and insecurity that comes in, that comes in form of community crisis and Boko Haram. When children's talents are wasted, they turn out to be tomorrow's insecurity themselves, and that will be good for our development in Nigeria. Today, even when students or children manage to enroll in schools, not all of them are able to finish the basic or the primary school curriculum or the primary school circle because of insecurity as they fear from from being out or getting into trouble. According to current data, only 30% of students and pupils drop out of school, and only 54% of them manage to transit to the secondary school level. This is as a result of insecurity. Can you imagine for a moment? These young children that have been kidnapped from schools by insurgents and rebellers to use them as a means of slave trade means of ransom bargaining and lots more. Whose children are these? Are they for the society or for their parents? Of course, when a child is an asset, they say it's for the society. But when it's a liability, it becomes to the parents. Please tell me. You may begin to wonder, right? Are these children really the leaders of tomorrow or mere human lethal weapon? 
do something better than enforcing agencies that won't make any meaningful impact or change the lives of these children. Support this child, give this child a home, give this child a shoulder to cry on, an arm to embrace him, and also a heart to care for him. Give this Nigerian child a hope. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Ayube Fele from Yorora College. Now welcome the supporting speaker, Lassie Sibukola, to come forward. Wow, insecurity of education. What a negative effect it has on the Nigerian child. With this I say, good day, Rise FM, my honorable panel, the judges, accurate timekeeper, fellow students, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lassie Suzena Bukola from Yonra College, Grangwe, and I'm here to enlighten us on the effects of insecurity of education on the Nigerian child. Since my colleague has already given us the definition of insecurity and some other things, I would like to educate us more on the effects of insecurity on education. Due to insecurity, in April 2014, Boko Haram stormed the hostel of Shibo Government Secondary School in Borun State and abducted about 200 girls who were preparing for their works. This has been the most dramatic and traumatic experience as to date, even though some have been freed. Do we know the state of their parents, their siblings, their relatives? Of course not. In a country that is filled with insecurity and violence, children are the most vulnerable members of that society as they now loiter the streets as orphans. Children's rights to be educated are no longer fulfilled as fear intervention exists to protect the child. It was recorded that about 40% of the Nigerian child do no longer attend secondary school due to the fear parents have for the insecurity of that school. Insecurity challenges also hinders a child's progress and development as it can no longer explore the greatness and potentials in them. Do the future and life of children, do the future and life of innocent children not important? Of course not. In recommending what should be done to foster future kidnap, security schools should increase their security management to make them less attractive targets. Thank you. I sincerely feel we can do better in terms of our program. Thank you. Yes. This is still season two of the Rise Oratory Competition, live on Rise 106.7 FM. And we've just heard from two different schools. Now, now Model College. And Yorore College. Yes, and uh, they've been speaking on the team. The insecurity on the education of the Nigerian child. The effects of insecurity, rather, on the education of the Nigerian child. Yes, and of course, uh, this has been put together by Rise 106.7 FM and SET Integrated Nigeria. <coughs> Remember, you can always follow what is happening on our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Rise FM Radio. Very, very important. I must also add that this is part of activities marking uh, the May 27th Children's Day. Yes, and of course, uh, there's still some other activities throughout the course of the day, but this is also one of the activities put together by Rise FM Radio marking uh, the 2019 uh, Children's Day celebration. All right, let's now give our attention to our judges uh, just to give us a general overview of what they've heard so far, starting with Mrs. Chima. Well, I want, I want to commend the speakers. They've done excellently well. We all know that public speaking is not easy, even for adults. So for children to come out here, and they're talking with such confidence, and I've listened to what they're saying. The content is so rich. Well done. Kudos to all of you. All right. I will, however, want to critique the last speaker from Yoren College. Maybe it was nerves, but um, maybe for the next round, try and be a little bit more um, comported. Your grammar, there were some little grammatical errors here and there, but overall, well done. All right. Thank you, thank you. Let's now hear from Dr. Steven. Thank you. Uh, it, it was a nice uh, hearing them speak. It was nice hearing them speak. Uh, this, this event, this program is, is, a, is a great one. I think it is, it is a good conversation for see young people interrogating societal problems. As far as insecurity is concerned, the, the topic is very contemporary 
and the way the, the student engaged the issue too, I think it was very good. However, uh, my point, uh, my observation is on the grammaticality of some of their expressions. Um, in the area of pronunciation, I noticed a student use the word cop or uh, instead of call. I also noticed a student use the word rebellious instead of rebel. A number of them, though I think this exercise generally is to develop them and it's also to, is to inspire positive thinking uh, overall. It was a marvelous yes, it was. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much to our judges. All right, uh, we'll go on a quick break at this point uh, so that our judges can put together the scores. And yes, uh, we can now know who uh, certainty who emerged in first place and in second place. Remember, like we mentioned before, uh, due to uh, the absence of federal government college, these two schools have automatically qualified to the next round. But of course, we must know who finished in first position and in second position. So let's go on a quick break. And when we come back, we'll continue to look at that and we'll take the judges as scores. <laughs> Stop the game. Pause, pause.